British people like me want to buy properties in a sunny climate. One of those sunny climates could be Florida or other parts of the United States. But what must you think about as a British person buying property in the United States? Great question. You will want to watch this video. All right, so in this question, we are going to ask the panel members um, how to buy an American home as a UK citizen. And there are two parts of this because you may be someone in Blighty that wants a holiday home in America. And we've got two panel members that are in a lovely sunny state of Florida that can certainly help us with that. Um, but we've got to position it now from a holiday maker who wants a holiday home or someone moving over to the United States. Uh, Kathy, John, how might someone get a home in the, in the US? Because in the UK, Kathy, you'll, you'll know um, that you can go on to Rightmove or Zoopla to find properties, but it doesn't work that way, does it, in the States? Well, I think the, um, the first thing when somebody's coming over as a holiday maker, and I'll take those as two separate questions, and they see the beautiful sunshine and the beaches and often they're renting somewhere and they're thinking, well, I can buy somewhere and maybe rent it when I'm not here. And it is, in fact, very easy to purchase here. So with that, I always give people a huge warning about that. The fact it's the same language, the fact that Americans make it very easy to purchase here. It's practically exactly the same if you're a cash buyer, exactly the same system as if you were an American. But what I would say is there are huge pitfalls. And I, the first thing I like to do with any customer who either walks in off the street or usually they're referred to me by somebody, first of all, they feel more comfortable, the fact that I'm from the UK, as probably John uh, Block will um, agree with that. There is a, a level of comfort there with, with the same accent. And the fact that although it's the same language, a lot of the terminology can be frighteningly different. And that's one of the fit pitfalls. So I like to give people an overview, even though they're keen to get out and look for their home, I make them sit down and give them an overview, almost a little reality check of really how the system works here, because without that, it's very un very hard for them to understand how things can go horribly wrong. Then I look at, um, well, what backup support do we need? So, and they tend to think that I'm the knowledge for everything. I'm not, but I am the resource. And that's why this is so great, this, this panel, because, you know, I've got so much more people now to refer to taxation, possibly immigration, because sometimes they touch upon that as well, but mainly the taxation, the, the legal structures, of course, mortgages, that's a huge thing. So, um, you know, it's wonderful to have a team of professionals. And I really put that aside, give them with an a, a multitude of numbers that they can go and speak to and then go through the system on how to purchase here. And it is very different. A lot of people who purchase here, they are already successful in the UK. You know, people don't come here with, with, with nothing in their pocket. And I'm very mindful of that. Often they want to dip their toe in the water and buy something small and relatively inexpensive, which I totally encourage. I think that's a good way to start. Um, and um, and it's, it's also a very good way for them to see, well, what area do I want? So with the overview, we might see a sampling of properties. And I'm quite honest with them. I say whether it's a good time to buy, whether it's not, whether they need to do more homework, whether they need to uh, speak to someone like Simon, John, you know, about mortgages, how much money, oh, can I get, an, you know, uh, buy something with nothing down, those sort of questions that really I hand straight over to, to, to the mortgage guys. Um, so it's really more of a relationship building and building their confidence uh, with me and whether it's right for them to buy or not. And if it's not right for them to buy, you know, I absolutely tell them that because often they'll come back three years, five years down the road or refer somebody. So I'm not really looking for a, a, a one-off sale here. Uh, I think one of the things that makes us very different is it's, is it's very much relationship building here um, and putting them in touch with the right people.
Just on that, Kathy, because uh, in the UK, we have very similar uh, issues in regards to holiday lets. I think it's fair to say that even in Florida, uh, there are restrictions of how long you can rent a property out for, the duration of when those properties can be let out for. Could you just fill us in for that detail? There are, and that depends on area as well. So I'm going to keep talking about Naples and, and the, the kind of the greater areas um, that are within the, um, what somebody who wants to buy Naples, well, okay, if, well, how about this? It's only 30 minutes up the road or 20 minutes up the road. There's a lot of heavy restrictions here. And again, I've had people say, Oh, but I bought somewhere and they said, don't worry about the restrictions. You can get round it. And I say, don't ever think you can get round it because one, that's really not a way to start off with a purchase in the US. And two, uh, why would you put yourself under that pressure? We've had somebody who was sitting at a, we have a lot of the guard gated communities, which um, I think Simon's familiar with and probably a number of you uh, more sophisticated about um, the pro properties here. So they're in these gated communities communities and we had somebody sitting on Christmas Eve with their family who can't get in because the owner you know sold them two weeks over Christmas and the new year um, and really it was an, an illegal let because they weren't allowed to rent for two weeks it had to be maybe a minimum of 30 days and they're sitting at the gatehouse now what do you do with something like that it's it's a horror story and um those sort of things i definitely want to avoid so with every property when we get to the stage of actually looking and we often start off here in the office on a huge screen and say well this looks great however you can't let it you can't let it for the first year or it's a minimum of six months. So this isn't right for what you want. So let's look at. So again, it's educating the um, potential buyer to start with, because there are heavy restrictions, as you so rightly say. Yeah. And, 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 and I first hand know the issues that you can have. You could easily make a complete hash of it by buying the right wrong type of property in the right area. Um, and it is good to get some advice from Cathy or from John Kroll. Jo John uh, Brock, over to you, good stuff. Uh, getting a mortgage, uh, someone who is there as a holiday maker versus someone who is living, is, are there any differences? Um, well, if you're talking about expats buying over here, um, so, so they're wanting to become expats over here, then as I said earlier, you've really got to look at that situation before you leave the UK. Uh, because you're going, to, you're going to be left in a in, in a big black hole. Uh, you can't get a foreign national mortgage because you've sold up and left the UK, and you can't get a US mortgage because you don't have a credit score and you don't have two years proof of income. So you're going to be left in a black hole. You have to sort it out before you leave the UK. Okay, um, if you're a uh, somebody who is wanting to buy an investment property or uh, a second home, um, then there's some really good products. Most, most of them don't require any proof of income anymore. Um, they're, they're based upon uh, the rental incomes that can be achieved. So supported by the rent uh, that can be achieved on, the, on that property. Typical down payments are 30%, uh, although there are uh, a number of companies now coming into the market with 25% down. Um, interest rates are the lowest for foreign nationals that I've seen since 2007. Um, currently, for that type of program with 30% down, 25% down, you're looking at around about 5.3%, um, which sounds high in the current uh, interest rate marketplace. But when you're talking about lenders that are lending to people who live four and a half thousand miles away, there is additional risk. And that is a that five point, you know, kind of five point three is a is a is a is a fairly decent, uh, decent type of rate uh, process. Uh, fairly, fairly similar to to the UK uh, takes about uh, four to six weeks uh, to go through the process of getting all the paperwork together. Um, uh, but as Kathy mentioned, there's lots of differences in the terminology that, 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 that uh, lenders have to get used to. Um, you know, there's no conveyancing lawyers, for example. Um, 
uh, th 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 there's a, an independent title company who is completely se separate from the transaction, uh, just handles all the paperwork and all the money side of it, uh, but they are completely um, uh, uh, detached from the buyer and completely detached from the seller. So there's a lot of things that you need to take into, into account um, before you buy. And I, I, I agree with Kathy in that if things are... Uh, uh, not right. Uh, I'll, I'll tell people. I, I'll tell people, and I'll tell. I'll give them ideas on how they've got to fix things and make things better. Uh, and if that means that they come back to me in two or three years' time, rather than rushing through a, p a purchase that isn't right for them, um, there's no point in doing that. I think again, from a tax perspective, clearly that's what I'm here for. But if you have income from in that's produced in America. You will have to confirm that with the IRS in terms of your taxable earnings um, and then yeah. potentially have to submit 1040 tax returns. In addition to that, um, you'll have to declare that income also on your foreign pages of a UK tax return if you're a holiday maker. So you do need to think about residency, because if you are going over to uh, stay in the States, then the US income will be only taxable in the US uh, and not so much in the UK. However, if you are going to be a holiday maker only and you make income in the US, then you'll have to declare that income to the IRS, which is a tax authority over there, but you'll also declare it in the UK as well. So there could be some uh, double taxation if you are not careful. Talking about tax structures and legal structures, uh, anyone that is uh, in the going to buy property in the States, um, I appreciate none of us are legal, Pitty needs not here for this one, but are there any legal structures that people should be buying? Can people buy property in their own name? Should they buy in an LLC or anything like that? Would you uh, like, is that something yeah, that uh, you'd like to answer? Oh, sorry, John. Go ahead, John. Sorry, wrong, John. John. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you go no, ahead, I, John. I, 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 <laughs> I'm happy. Um, people, uh, when they're buying investment properties over here, they can buy uh, properties in their sole names. They can buy properties in the name of any corporate structure, including LLC, LLP, um, S Corp, C Corp. They can buy those properties in any of those, those structures. Most lenders will accommodate purchases within a legal structure. There are one or two that you know, I only want the purchases in uh, in personal personal names. Right, John um, Kroll, what would you like to add to that? Well, yeah, we have a lot of flexibility here. Uh, how to title property, uh, trusts, LLCs, corporations, you know, individually, and that's where you really want to get your advice. Uh, and each country has different, like a Canadian, they have a thing called a cross-border trust, which is very advantageous to them, how they title property here. So um, doing your due diligence ahead of time before you title something is very important. Hmm. Yeah, because I, I think the one thing I was always told is about the legalities of it. In the UK, you're hardly going to be sued for stuff. But in America, it is certainly... Uh, if you drive down to Naples, you, every billboard that you see, every every third one is about someone suing someone else. So it's uh, it's very different in the States as it is the UK. So you can, I would certainly take some legal advice as well as some tax advice as mortgage advice. Get yourself a good realtor. Uh, in the UK, you buy a property, you can go on to right move, and then you speak to any Tom, Dick and Harry, who is an estate agent. In the States, is not the same. You have to really get a relationship built up with a broker like uh, John Kroll or Kathy and start that relationship. They can then reach out to all the sellers for you in which to buy property. And I think that's really a good set of answers there. John, you've got something else to add? Yeah, I, I, I would just add to that, that the, uh, the system over here is completely different to the UK. Um, you know, if you want to buy a property in the UK, you walk up and down the high street, you go into a, a real estate office uh, or you search it on, you know, right move or, or something like that. Uh, and then you go in and you make an offer. But you're, you're, you're actually making an offer to the, the people who are representing the seller. Right. There is no such thing as or, or very few people that deal with the buying side who represent you as the buyer. And I think that's critical, 
in the US because you're dealing with buying a property that from four and a half thousand miles away. And it's important that you have a realtor that's representing your interests in the contracts um, that you don't pay their fee. The sellers pay their fee. Uh, so you, you're, you're getting a free property finder, right? You're getting somebody that can find you a property uh, and you don't even have to pay them. This, that's a seller cost. So it's important to engage the services of a, of a buyer's realtor uh, to help you find the right property for, that, to, to buy. And I would like, um, and what I would just just like to piggyback on on the end of uh, John Brock's um, comments there, uh, the due diligence that you do on the property, do it on whoever you get to do the buying for you. Because as John says, you're four and a half thousand miles away. And if you're starting a relationship, somebody just Google them, make sure they haven't got, a, you know, just make sure the person who you're choosing to work with, referrals are always great. Somebody who's who's working with a team of professionals. Um, how many How many have they sold in the past year? How many British clients have they sold to in exactly that position? Because just, um, sort of going back to an important point on how you title the property, how you buy it. That's also depending on what you use it for. So if you're just using it for yourself and you never rent it out, that's absolutely fine. But if you're going to be renting it out, then you're going to be one day you don't want to have to use one of the phone numbers on the billboards of those attorneys that you're passing. So you need that protection of maybe an LLC or, or some structure. And, um, you know, the horror stories travel way faster than the good story. So um, we kind of make it our, uh, our goal to um, make sure that nobody ends up that their Florida dream becomes a Florida nightmare. Um, so, yeah, due diligence on the, on the person you choose to work with as well. Just to finally finish on this topic, um, Genji, I'll bring you into this, but there is a danger, is there not, of buying a property that's maybe 10% below market value, think, thinking you've got a good deal, but then you make a hash of the exchange rate and you pay way too much commissions or you don't get the right uh, exchange rate. What advice might you have for that aspect? Yeah, so uh, thank you, Summer. I think the, one of the biggest mistakes people usually do is, uh, is exchange currency via their own bank. Um, and, you know, even worse, some people use TravelX, you know, which are travel service providers, not um, proper exchange rate providers. Right. So, you know, banks make money. So they, they, they will often say no commissions, no charge for no tra handling charge, transaction charge, but their charge is reflected in the fact that they give you a lower rate. Now, there are, you know, it's not just banks who can provide this currency transfer service. There are plenty of um, third party solutions that can do this. You know, there are there are people we work with, you know, the companies called Monex and Poor FX. There are also companies, for example, such as TransferWise, also known as Wise. So it really is, you know, before you, you know, you've secured a great deal on a property, make sure you secure the best deal for the currency exchange as well. So, you know, the advice in this area is just to compare. It's, it's, there's a lot of things out there. Find the right people to do the comparison for you. And I think, Simon, I've got a, I think I've got a, uh, just a question on tax for you as well. I do, you know, may, many people in the UK, right? Um, you know, when you buy a property, everyone knows you can't deduct interest from your tax returns. But I do believe in America, you can deduct your interest, mortgage interest, you know, on your tax returns. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. And and amazingly as well, the, the key difference for me, Chenji, when you talk about taxation uh, of buying properties in the States, that you can offset depreciation, uh, which is not something you get in the UK. Um, so you've got to be doing something disastrously wrong if you're paying too much tax. Uh, but that that's that's certainly a conversation for another day, I think. Um, but yes, good points uh, yeah. from all the panel members. There are many live events that you can register for free. There are four events that's showing HK to UK to help people move from Hong Kong to the UK. The Property Expert Panel. If you're a property investor or a property developer, this will be very useful for you. Tax Q&A. If you want to ask proactive tax questions in regards to structures and how to mitigate tax in the future. And finally, UK Tax Return Q&A. As it says, to deal with questions in relation to your tax returns before you submit it to HMRC. 
Don't forget that these events are live and will be shown on YouTube the day after. So why not register today, start saving tax tomorrow.